Hi, this is Tom Muro with World Class Coaching with another in our series of animated drills. This week I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of doing a drill, I'm going to talk about a formation. And I want to talk about the 343 formation today. This is something that I started using with my girls team specifically when I when I first started kind of toying with it. And the reason that I liked it, especially even on the, the kind of the younger side of the girls uh, teams is because these three in the back because you know when you're talking about 343 three, so we're talking about three in the back, four midfield players and then three players up front. The three players in the back were more than capable of dealing with the challenges that they were facing from uh, other teams their own age. Uh, and the reason is these players could shift to one side and cover that space. And, and obviously maybe our spaces would be a little bit tighter here depending on the position of the ball. Um, but they're able to cover this without really worrying too much about exposing this space. Because at the level that of the teams that I was coaching as far as the, you know, with the girls and even at the high school girls, you know, hitting a, you know, diagonal ball into space, you know, 50 yards away uh, or so, then it, that just wasn't a challenge that we had to worry about dealing with. Um, so that's something that we could overload one side and not really be afraid that we're going to be exposed on this other side of the field. If they did switch the ball, then we were going to be able to slide our players over and reposition and in order to cover each other quick enough that we weren't going to really get caught out. So that was the first reason I started to experiment with that. I also really like the idea of having three up top because this makes it very difficult for a team to build out of the back. Even if a team is playing a back four, which you know most teams do, you know most of our opponents did anyway, then we've still got so much pressure here that it's going to force these players to play longer or if they try to play short, it's going to, you know, give us the best opportunity to press them. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, from an attacking standpoint, obviously we're committing numbers forward and making things happen. And I particularly like the way that Anson Dorrance uh, organized his girls at UN UNC to play this formation, where his emphasis was getting all three of these forwards on the ball side of the field. So if the ball was over here, then all three forwards were pressing and attacking to win the ball here and then able to work together and combine to get forward from there. So in his you know, formation, a lot of his width would come from these midfield players. And that's a decision that you have to make when you're playing with a 3-4-3 is where is your width going to come from? So if you're going to play these three players, you know, working together, uh, always playing on the ball side of the field and always pressing the ball, then if you're going to find width in the game, it's going to be from these outside players. And just for the sake of discussion, I've, I've labeled them today um, so that we kind of know what we're talking about. So in the back, I've got a number five, a number three, a number two. And then we've got our holding midfielder is a four. And then our attacking midfielder or playmaker, if you will, would be the number 10. And then the left would be uh, a number eight and the right would be a number six. And then up top, we've got our striker as a nine and our two uh, wingers, if you will, our two, our two outside forwards as the 11 and the seven. So if you're going to play these players narrow, you're going to you know, be trying to find your width from your midfield. And so if these three players are pressing the ball on this side, then we're going to ask our number six to be able to get up and, and fill these spaces. If we win the ball and are able to attack that space, you know, that's been left empty, then we're going to get our number six there to do that. So that that's one you know way of playing it. And that's the way I really st started playing it with my teams. But, you know, there's obviously a lot of different variations that you can do. Uh, just depending on the quality of your players in terms of the qualities of your players, you know, what they bring to the game, not just how good they are. Um, you know, back in the 90s, Barcelona played with this 3-4-3, but they played it much tighter here in the midfield where they wanted to dominate this area of the field because obviously if you're playing in a 3-4-3, one of the weaknesses, and we'll talk about strengths and weaknesses here in a minute, but you know, one of them would be you know, these two isolated players if you're playing against uh, a three 
uh, player midfield, then these are going to be on their own and, and have a tough time if they're outnumbered. But Barcelona chose to play narrower and play these players in tight. And, you know, then they could, you know, run the game from their midfield with uh, Pep Guardiola playing in the back here and kind of dictating play back in the 90s. You know, you know, more recently, Chelsea has uh, switched to a 3-4-3 and they're playing much more expansive. They're opening this up and they're playing these players here and they're actually playing their number four and number 10 more side by side than you know Barcelona did or, or more than teams do that are playing a diamond in the midfield. They're playing more across the midfield. And so you know their width is coming from these players and that allows these players to play inside, you know more like I was talking about uh, with Anson Dorrance's teams where these three players then are able to play together because the width is coming from the midfield. You know, obviously then, you know, we go back to talking about that challenge of isolated players. You know, in his team, you'll actually see forwards coming back, hunting the ball back into the midfield and helping these players to manage the numbers in the midfield at times. So there's lots of different ways to play this formation. Uh, but the, the reason I like it is that if you're only facing two forwards, which if, you know, the teams you're playing against are, are playing a, a 4-4-2 or if they're playing a 4-2-3-1, you know, then you're only managing one striker, then there's no need for us to have four. If you're dealing with younger teams, then, you know, the technical abilities of those players to take advantage of space that's left is much less. So I like that. If you're looking at it from an attacking standpoint, getting numbers forward and having these players, you know, work together is a huge advantage. And then you've just got to organize your midfield that in a way that kind of plays to your strengths and the strengths of your players in order to organize them and be able to, uh, to make sure you're managing those spaces. So that's either going to be a wide, expansive midfield or more of a tucked-in midfield, just depending on how you want to approach that. So what we were talking about with the disadvantages. So if you were to just look at the disadvantages, you could say that only having three in the back is a disadvantage. I guess it would be a disadvantage if you want your uh, outside backs to join in and get forward. If that were to happen, then, you know, if a player is going to get forward and, and work with a number six here on the outside, then you're going to be looking for your number four to drop into space in order to cover or, or drop into the middle and have your five slide over, just depending on, you know, how you're organizing that. If, if the number five moves to support and you're kind of keeping your shape, you know, then the number four could drop in and cover that role and so that we've still got the three in the back so that we don't get countered badly. So if, you're, if you want your defenders to get involved, frankly, the way I like, you know, to have my players, you know, be able to get forward and get involved, then, you know, that can be a negative in this formation. You know, the most obvious negative is just having these two players in the center of midfield and having them manage, you know, playing against three-man midfields, which are so common today. If you're playing against a 4-2-3-1, you know, then potentially these players could be really outnumbered and you're going to have to bring, either bring players back in or you're going to have to play with a tighter central midfield. You're going to play with a, a tighter midfield in general just by bringing these players in. So now we've got the advantage of playing with a three-man midfield but then you've got to, you know, if you, if you cover the inside, you're leaving the outside open. So you have to decide how you're going to deal with these spaces. If you're doing this, then you're going to get your width from your outside players. So you're either going to ask them to come back and have some defensive responsibilities, or you're going to ask this group to slide and cover space and, and make sure that the number six can still cover that space and stay connected by moving everybody across. You know, so that's the challenge there. You know, up front, uh, we're kind of spoiled for choices there. There are no real negatives up top. You know, just the advantages that we already talked about. So there's obviously lots of different ways to organize this uh, formation. Uh, a new book we've actually got coming out uh, looks at the way Antonio Conte has organized Chelsea and kind of changed their formation uh, at already into the season as things just weren't working out with his more traditional system that he liked to play, switching to this 4-3-3 and the way he expand, you know, played this in a more of an expansive way. So we've got a book that details that, that I'll put uh, details to in the description if you're interested in more information on playing the 3-4-3. Thanks a lot.